We're about halfway done with my best of Next Fest from February 2024. We have plenty more indie games with some fantastic and interesting demos to check out. We are starting things off with Indica. This is a kind of narrative, I guess like puzzle slash horror game. We play as a nun in alternate history Russia who's on a trip to find herself and be with two very mysterious companions. First, a prisoner who has broken out and has I think abducted her or she decided to go with him. And her other companion is the devil. Sounds like a, a very awesome road trip uh, plot. But I guess this is the religious version of Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. The game itself will involve you exploring the land, solving puzzles, and trying not to die in varying degrees of brutal situations. The game definitely has style to it with some very interesting camera work and cutscenes. There is a leveling and experience. You see that kind of number in the upper left hand corner, and I don't quite know what that is actually going to entail in the main game. I leveled up several times during the demo, but far be for me to figure out what it actually meant. The game itself is definitely leaning more towards kind of like a narrative adventure game as you'll have to survive kind of chase sequences and stuff like that and if you go the wrong way you will have to reload and the game's kind of final set piece did feel a little bit clunky in terms of explaining what the player was supposed to do as any other decision meant death but this game certainly has style to spare any very interesting story and i'm curious to see where it will all lead so if you're looking for a story where the devil is your co-pilot, I guess, then you should definitely check this one out. And now for something a little bit later with Oil Forge. This is an automation style game, kind of giving me vibes of Terraria. You play as a robot who is trying to figure out what has happened to the world. And in order to do that, we're going to do what we always do. Build lots and lots of forges, ovens, make lots of goods, and automate like there's no tomorrow. The structure here is that you'll set up drills, forges, and storage around various hard points of resources, kind of like built into the walls themselves. This will allow you to move goods around and get them to where they need to go for refinement and processing. There is progression in the form of kind of putting resources into the crystal that's in like the middle of the area. By doing this, you'll be able to unlock new tech. You'll also be able to expand the world, which will add more lore, more resources, and more dangers to deal with. The general play felt good. It did feel a little bit clunky in some areas in terms of moving resources back and forth. I would have liked to have played more of this, but unfortunately the demo did softlock several times during the tutorial and we were not able to make any more progress. This one has some charm to it and if they can work out the bugs and get those issues out of the way, this could be another great automation game for fans looking for a new one to test their uh, gear grinding skills with. And now something for the spelling fans in the audience. This is Spell Strife. And what we have here is Plants vs. Zombies meets player vs. player with Scrabble. And yes, that is uh, one heck of a combination. How this all works is that you will summon monsters using the power of words, many of them that I never even heard before that the game has explained to me. The first letter of whatever word you spell determines the class of the character. Each class will have different attacks, different abilities, strengths, weaknesses, all that good stuff. The longer the word you build, the higher the stats of said creature. In order to win, you must get your creatures to the other end of the field and attack the opponent's base before they do the same to you. So not only is there strategy involved, but a whole mess of spelling. If you are absolutely horrible 
at spelling and Scrabble like yours truly, then this is definitely not the game for you. But there is certainly a lot of charm and interesting designs here. So, if you are a wordsmith more than a weaponsmith, and looking for a very interesting game to play, then this should definitely be on your radar. And now we have Fira. This one is going for like a throw everything against the wall kind of design. It's one part turn-based RPG, one part procedurally generated roguelike, character creations, upgrades, uh, combinations, and more. The concept here is we play a character who can enter the dreams of people to fight their inner demons and bring them peace. And we do that in the form of turn-based RPG battles. You'll use different stones in order to kind of combine and create the characters that you bring into the dreamscape with you. Each character will come with different skills, abilities, passives, all that good stuff. You can equip them with different items, you can get different resources through the dream world that you can use to upgrade things back in the real world. The problem that Thera has is that the onboarding is just not up to it in terms of explaining what it is that you're trying to do in this game. There is something about making the levels harder to get more rewards, adding additional modifiers, and even just trying to figure out what attacks do what was very difficult. This is a game that is really trying to aim to be more on the advanced, or should I say super advanced side, in terms of how it plays out. If they can improve the GUI and the onboarding, this could be a very original game to try out, but for right now, this is definitely one for experts only. And now, for something very different, we have Please Touch the Artwork 2. This is a short form hidden object adventure game that's also going to be free. We play a skeleton painter who someone is messing with various works of art from within, and in order to save the day, we're going to do what they always tell you not to do at museums, and that is, well, touch all the artwork. The game is a mix of hidden object puzzles and then kind of more traditional adventure-based puzzles. People will want you to find stuff, and you're going to search around for said stuff. And then at certain times, you'll need to solve different puzzles, kind of repair paintings, etc, etc. The art style here is really well done. Kind of reminds you a little bit of like that, like a Monty Python-esque look to it. And there'll be another adventure game later on in the series that has a very similar look to this. But I enjoy this one. Again, you're going to be playing this for the hidden objects and the unique aesthetics and visual design. I don't know how long a short form adventure game is going to be, but if you're looking for a very quirky game involving a lot of paintings and art, then you should check this one out. We have a different kind of adventure with A Dragon's Tale Fading Light. This one is trying to combine puzzle platforming and progression into a single game. How this works is that you are exploring the world looking for MacGuffins and runes. Runes will enable you to upgrade and unlock new abilities. This could be offensive, defensive abilities, movement tech, etc. Which you will then use in order to solve more puzzles around the level, get more resources, rinse and repeat. And it's a very unusual mix of designs. As it's not, at least from what we play in the demo, looking to be like, a pure, super technical, difficult, like I am obstacle for focused platformer. But you're still going to have to look for upgrades, get new abilities, kind of Metroidvania style. This one, kind of like Fira from a few minutes ago, is really trying to do a lot of things all at the same time. It is far more approachable, but after playing the demo, I still couldn't quite tell kind of like where we're going to go in this one. Is it going to become overly difficult? Is it going to become very focused on builds and upgrades? And this one could be something interesting if you're looking for, again, this kind of mix of puzzle and platforming design. 
So if you're a fan of platforming and looking for one that's not going to be like super intensive, at least not from when we play the demo, I would at least give this one a check and see if it will work for you. And now we turn to uh, Beat Slayer. This is an action rogue late, where it is a dystopian future. A family member has gone missing, and in order to take revenge and bring down the evil corporation, we are going to have to beat up robots, enemies, and more, one beat at a time. The game itself kind of feels like a combination of BPM or Crypto the Necro Dancer with that of Hades. You are going to be running, dashing, and smashing around areas. However, in order to actually hit anything, you must time your movements and attacks to the beat. If you try to attack offbeat, your attacks will miss. This will also build up a combo meter as well as special meter for additional attacks. Now, here's kind of the issue that I have with this game. There is no hit stun whatsoever on any enemies and the only way you can kind of reliably tell when enemies going to attack is a quick flash when they're about to attack however when you hit enemies it also creates like a flash and graphical effects so you can kind of tell where the difficulty of kind of readability with this game comes from and the beat or rhythm based gameplay is definitely more strict compared to say something like Metal Hellsinger, it is more in line with BPM or bullets per minute. And because of that, it didn't feel as good for me to play as someone who is horrible where it comes to rhythm in their games. There is upgrades and persistence in the form of unlocking permanent stat boosts, as well as completing challenges for more experience, collecting different perks or buffs during a match, and so on. If you like rhythm-based gameplay and looking for another kind of like action take on it, kind of like a hi-fi rush, but with a greater or more stricter take on the rhythm, then you should check this one out. But if you had a, a hard enough time doing Mel Helsinger or hi-fi and looking for another game that's kind of more, I guess, gentler in that respect, then this is not going to be the game for you. But it is certainly an interesting one, nonetheless. And now we turn to King's Grave. This is a kind of Metroidvania by way of, I guess, like a, almost like a city growing. In, in a strange twist, it reminds me a lot of the classic game Soul Blazer. In this one, you play as a king who has been resurrected by a strange force to find your entire kingdom dead and or dying from a strange curse. And in order to save the day, we're going to do what kings normally don't do, and that is go into the world, beat up enemies, and bring our kingdom back one villager and building at a time. The structure of this one is that the world itself is separated into various districts. In order to reclaim a district, you must kill all the enemies, strange creatures, and more in it. Once that district has been cleansed, it now becomes open for fast travel, and any buildings or constructibles can be used. Using different resources that you can build or find in the world, you can construct new buildings. Each building kind of acts as like a Metroidvania style upgrade. In order to dig up rubble, you need to kind of repair kind of the construction guild or whatever it was called. To unlock a new power, you must go and reclaim that kind of temple or shrine. As you get new powers and abilities, more of the map opens up, which means you can then build more areas, get more powers, and again, it's Metroidvania goodness all the way around. The only real issue that I had with this game was that I was not a fan of some of the more adventure-style puzzles, and one of the puzzles in the game kind of soft-locked for me, where it would not show the hint for the path that you were supposed to take. And that kind of stopped my progress in the demo very hard. But I really do enjoy the loop that this game is presenting. I am a huge fan of the kind of soul blazer, beat things up and then build the world back one step at a time style design. And if you enjoy 
the likes of Soul Blazer. And looking for a kind of Metroidvania take on this, then I highly recommend you check this one out. We're going to a different kind of kingdom for our next game with Perennial Order. And I think I may have butchered that name. This is a boss rush centric kind of body horror game. The world has fallen plague to a mysterious curse that has transformed everyone into human plant hybrid monstrosities. And it's going to be up to us to figure out how to save what's left of this world by, well, slashing and killing all the big bad nasties. The game itself is built around very high stakes combat. You only have one hit, and if you take any damage during a boss, that is it. Your weapon has this kind of sweet spot. That's that gauge you can see as I'm attacking. If you time your attack just as your weapon is like sparking, you can do a critical hit. And you'll need to do this in order to do more and more damage. Bosses will come with different phases, and they can change quite dramatically as you go through. Upgrades come in the form of instincts that can be attached to your character, and I'm sure you'll get like more like I guess like instinct or perk points as the game goes on. This can enable you to do new special abilities, give you new passives, etc. etc. There is an open world to explore, but from my time in the demo, I could not tell if the world is just for lore-related purposes. Or will there be any like upgrades, unlocks, or so on there? As an interesting twist, and what should get this game on your radar, this is also a co-op game. It will be possible to play through the entire campaign, fight all the bosses with an additional player. I do not know if the game will scale or change based on playing this in co-op form. But I enjoy this one. As a fan of, again, challenging games as many of you are aware, this one definitely works for me. The animation, just kind of like the frames in which enemies attack, felt consistent. And this is one of those games where you'll need to learn each boss's pattern, obviously if you want to have a chance at surviving. So if you and a buddy like some challenging 2D combat, and looking for a game where you can go together and rip and tear, your way across the land, then definitely check it out. And last but not least for the showcase, we go to a Death Bound. This is a Souls Lake where it reminds me a lot of Mortal Shell, and that you're not controlling as a unique character or as yourself, but you're going to be inhabiting the shells or souls of characters who have died. How this one plays is that each character is a unique individual with their own skills, class, abilities, passives, and more. And you'll be able to swap between them using the interface in the bottom left, kind of being blocked by my video right now. You'll have to do this because each character has their own health bar. And if any one of them dies, that is considered a death from you. So you'll need to swap between them in order to use their different abilities, different strengths, and so on, and deal with all kinds of enemies along the way. I like the twist of kind of having your own, I guess, single player party that you'll be doing your souls liking with. There's going to be a massive passive tree for each character, and you'll unlock additional characters as you play, but you can only have four slotted at any given time. The main problem that I had with this one from the demo is that the UI and GUI are not really good at the moment. While the game tells you you can play with keyboard and mouse, the keyboard controls are just all over the place. And it can be very frustrating to control this one, at least at the moment. But there is certainly some potential here for fans of, again, like more shells style of like a more like slower paced souls like with the focus of like different characters, different abilities and so on. So if you enjoy your souls like with a lot of customization to go with it, then this is definitely a recommendation. And with that, we're going to wrap things up for today. 
you there are still plenty more parts to go around and we'll have more demos coming real soon so as always thank you for tuning in let me know if you let me take a look at your game for a future stream and video and with that i will see you all for the next part that's going to do it for today's video thank you so much for watching be sure to do the youtubing stuff people tell you to do if you're interested in more of my thoughts on design check out my books wherever they are sold Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where you some of the art and science of games.